Hey everybody, welcome to another CrushLivePoker.com hand review. In this particular hand, we're going to be taking a look at a full house over full house scenario from a bomb pot on Stones Live Poker. Before we get into the hand, I want to talk about this project that I've been promoting over the last few months, and you have seen some of the major vloggers promoted as well, PKC. PKC is a real money online mobile app that offers cash games to North American residents. And they are a partner company with one of the largest online gaming companies in the world in Asia. And that company has live poker rooms in Macau, in the Philippines, and in Jeju. PKC is fully licensed in Manila and has an RNG certification through GLI. I think my reputation in the poker community speaks for itself over the last 15 years. I know the higher-ups at PKC. I've actually done business with them on other projects over the last 5 to 10 years. And I have the utmost confidence in the platform. And also, I'm very impressed with the resources they put into anti-botting and anti-colluding. And I have faith that the player funds are segregated and held securely. So if you're interested in playing real money online poker, check out the description in the link. So this hand is a bomb pot. And if you're not familiar with the bomb pot, bomb pot is when everyone gets two cards, you put an ante in, and you play post-flop. So you get into a lot of interesting scenarios because anyone can have any two cards. So by definition, the ranges are uncapped. The amount of the ante you know, changes from game to game. In this particular hand, we were playing a $40 ante, and it was seven-handed. So the total pot size was $280. I happened to be in the small blind, and I got dealt a couple of rags, queen four offsuit, and we ended up taking a flop. So the flop came out, queen, three, queen, rainbow. And I take a look back at my cards, and I realize that I have trip queens. Now, the interesting thing about a bomb pot is that position is really, really key. You know, if I come out and bet from the small blind out into eight people, my range is actually quite strong as opposed to it maybe getting checked to me in position and uh, taking a stab at it. So I usually take the approach of checking my entire range from up front in a bomb pot. Here with trips and a weak kicker, I thought that that was going to be the best play. And if somebody in the field had bet, most likely I would just check call on a rainbow board, especially if it went bet call. I mean, I have three queens, but there's four queens in the deck, and everyone has any two cards, so it's definitely possible that someone else could have had trips. Of course, that doesn't happen. It gets checked around, and we move to the turn. So the turn comes out the four of spades, which now basically gives me the nuts. Well, it gives me the nuts. I have queens full of fours. So at some point, you're probably thinking about, you know, maybe building a pot up. But the backdoor spades coming in, I figured that if I were to check again here, someone might take a stab at it. Uh, it also really gives somebody the opportunity to catch up. I mean, I really cover the board here. Um, when the flop gets checked around, the chances are less likely that somebody has a queen. Obviously, there's two queens on board. Now, when a four comes, I mean, I have queen four. I have the board covered. People play bomb pots a little bit in a strange way. I, I feel like they don't understand the value of hands and the fact that, you know, people can have any two cards. Because really, when the pots get large, especially when you're deep stack, you, you kind of see more PLO type hand values as, you know, sort of, you know, winning hands at showdown. The other interesting quirk uh, about bomb pots is because, you know, there's an ante, the SPR or the stack to pot ratio is rather small compared to the stack sizes. But this is a case where I felt like, hey, even if it gets checked around again, if somebody were to hit a pocket pair, you know, I could get a fair amount of, of money. Also, there's nothing wrong with somebody getting a free card and, and making, a, making a backdoor flush here, you know, as well. There are some straight draws and stuff like that out there. So I end up checking, gets checked all the way over to the cutoff, who, of course, is Veronica Brill. Uh, she's a commentator on Stone's Live Poker, angry uh, Polak, and she bets kind of small, she bets 75 here into 280, but for the same reasons why I didn't lead out, I just thought that I would proceed with the hand as a call 
here to probably try to get other people to call, basically drawing dead. I mean, any pair below a queen that might peel here is drawing dead to my full house. Spades are drawing dead, of course, except for the straight flush. So I didn't want to check raise and basically knock out some people that might check call with draws. So I ended up calling, but unfortunately, everybody folded behind me, and then we rolled to the river. So the river comes out the ace of spades, which is quite interesting because it brings in the back door flush. Now, because Veronica didn't bet on the flop, I thought that there was less of a chance that she had a queen here. And if she was betting spades, then she's made you know her flush. So I didn't want to just come out and lead and just get called. If I come out and lead, I figured... Hey, I'll go for a check raise here. I mean, occasionally I might lose some value from someone that didn't bet a queen or somehow has, you know, something else stronger. So I decide to check here and she once again bets $150. Now, at this point, I thought that she was pretty strong, you know, maybe a flush. I mean, I thought that that was probably the 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 most likely hand. I think it's also interesting to note here too that the ace of spades comes on the river which means that no one had the not flush draw or the ace high flush draw basically and I don't have the ace high flush draw because it comes out at the end you know when I call am I calling with like the king high flush draw here you know something like that when she bets and you know like I've got the rest of the field behind me so I decide to raise here and I make it uh 625 and, you know, she goes into the tank and she thinks and thinks and thinks. And, uh, you know, I'm expecting her to either sort of snap call or possibly fold. Didn't expect her to think for so long. Um, the crazy part of this is, and I didn't realize it until after I watched the hand, is if she were to three bet jam, because there are so many combinations of hands that are possible and there was really no betting by anyone except Veronica, she could have the full combinations of anything. I actually lose to quite a few hands here. One of them is pocket aces. There's three full combos of pocket aces that certainly might play this way. Occasionally, maybe aces bets on the flop. Another one is ace queen. Um, there are another three combinations of ace queen. It's really easy to figure that out because there's one queen left and three aces left. If they, you know, if if there's an ace on the board, two queens, and I've got a queen in my hand. And then, of course, there's a straight flush out there as well, which is deuce five of spades. All those hands are totally viable. So if she came back over and jammed, you know, back over the top, it would be really interesting to uh, for me to figure out what I would have done because I don't think she would ever do that with a flush. Now, when she tanks and tanks and tanks, you know, we can see that she has pocket fours. And that's really the, the question here because... A lot of people were saying, oh, is she going to shove back? Maybe that's an overplay. Um, you know, it's at least a call. But I never actually expected to see what ended up happening. Okay, she's not. No oh, my way. God, she folds. That is insane. Veronica. And oh, get my God. oh, my God. She mucked the King 10 earlier as well. Oh, you my really God. Big folds. Veronica, what is I mean, I you can have flushes too. You, I just call the river. He would have took Bart. You would have gotten my money. Now, as much as the commentators think that this was a crazy fold, I think that this spot is really close. Like I said before, I think that people overvalue their hands in bomb pots because of the ace of spades came at the end, and I'm very rarely check raising a flush. Although it is interesting to note that I do have the queen of spades, so. It's possible, I guess, I could have check-raised, you know, the queen high flush, which would have been trips on the flop, turning a flush, and then sort of blocks a lot of the possibilities of full houses out there. But, you know, that takes a lot to for that to basically happen. I would have had to check the flop, just check called the turn, you know, and go for a check-raise on the river. If we take a lot of these flushes out of my range, and Veronica's got pocket fours, I mean, I guess pocket threes is, is a possibility, but usually in bomb pots, people are starting to put some money out there. I mean, the pot is large, and occasionally you do need to bet for a little bit of protection, even though you have a full house, just because, you know, people can basically have 
any two cards and you're sometimes actually giving a two outer in the form of a larger pocket pair like a, a free roll for your entire stack i really think that i am very very full house heavy here and you know maybe i end up with like one combo of the three pocket threes in this particular spot and occasionally maybe i check raise you know with queen x of spades because i block a lot of the full houses I mean, we're talking about maybe two or three combinations of hands or something like that. But, you know, from her perspective, she actually loses to a lot of hands here. I mean, there are six full combos of queen three that she loses to, two combos of queen four, one combo of five deuces spades that I think are all played this way. That's nine full combos. Then, of course, there are six combos of ace queen and three combos of pocket aces. Now, maybe those hands aren't played like this. Maybe half of them are played like this. So... You're looking at maybe like 14 hands that she might lose to. And when I raise to 625, she's getting about two and a half to three to one. So we can actually look at that like as a ratio. Do I have, say, four or five different hands that I'm either overvaluing or bluffing with? I don't think I have very many bluffs at all when I call next to act on the turn. I, I think it's really, really close. Here as played, if I was in her spot, maybe I would just toss in the 475 and, you know, be done with it and think that it's a cooler. But you got to give her a lot of credit for making this incredible way down. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to check out more training videos like this, head over to CrushLivePoker.com. And of course, check out Stones Live Poker every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday from 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. Pacific Time over on their YouTube or Twitch channel.